Have you ever spent a few days or a week away from your drums only to find to your dismay when you get back to the kit that you've completely lost the progress that you made last week? If so, today's lesson is going to really help you out. I believe you can build significant coordination away from the kit by practicing a type of tabletop drumming in a chair. This will not only help you maintain the growth you've accomplished, but it will actually accelerate your limb independence. This is pretty cool. I'll teach you how to do this today. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out with me today. I help you become the drummer other people want to jam with and have in their band. And we do this by teaching you the non-glamorous core drumming skills that matter the most and get you the results you want the fastest. So we're digging into this big struggle today that so many drummers have gone through where you lose coordination, you lose tightness, you lose drumming progress when you spend a few days away from the kit, especially if it's a week or a couple weeks away from the kit, if you go on a long beach trip. And so many of my students have voiced to me this struggle. And it's challenging on a couple of levels because you come back from your trip and you're back on the drums and you've lost all this progress, so that's frustrating. You feel like it takes a little while to gain it back. But it's kind of a double whammy because you're also like, well, I practiced so hard before I left. Was all that practice meaningless? Because I seem to have lost all that. So it's like you worked hard, but all that's, it's frustrating. It's a really frustrating thing, and I've heard this over and over again from so many students of mine who have dealt with this. So we're gonna solve this today, and I think this whole tabletop drumming exercise, as crazy as it sounds, it really is, I really wanna validate this for you and show you how this really can help you build maybe even more coordination than you would build at the kit. This is pretty cool. So before we get into that, I have a free gift for you. I want you to grab in the description, and this is especially for you beginner drummers. This is my 25, Practical Rock Grooves and Fills e-guide. This is essential for you. If you are just now starting out on the drums and you're like, I wanna play songs, I wanna have fun on the drums, I wanna play some songs, but I just don't know what to play. Like, I need to learn some basic grooves, I need to learn some fills. This guide is your cheat sheet. If you learn these 25 grooves, 25 fills, it sounds like a lot, but you don't even have to learn all of them. Just learn a few. Learn a few basic ones and you will be able to play probably 95% of rock and pop songs that you hear which is so empowering, so encouraging. You'll be able to you know, get on the drums, playing songs, and really having fun. You've gotta have fun early on, otherwise, what's the point, right? That's, that's why you get into this, you wanna play songs. So this guide's gonna help you out. It's got notation for all these grooves as well as audio recordings, and so whichever way you learn, you'll be able to learn these, and you'll get better at reading notation too in the process. So my free gift to you, go and grab that. So I remember being just a few months into learning the drums and going on a vacation and coming back and kind of being worried like, oh no, have I lost a bunch of progress? I've got to play at church tomorrow morning. I got back from vacation on a Saturday night. I got to play at church in the morning. I was in high school. I was playing in the high school student worship band. I'd only been taking lessons for a couple of months. So it's kind of that uneasy feeling of what if, I, what if I've lost everything because I haven't played in a week. So I got home Saturday night. I played through a little coordination exercise. I'm like, okay, this feels okay. And went to church the next morning. And everything felt all right. It wasn't bad. Like, yeah, maybe it took me some time to kind of get reaccustomed to it and feel, you know, at home on the instrument again. But it really wasn't too shaky. And honestly, I credit that to tabletop drumming. As crazy as it sounds, you tabletop drummers are going to get some big time validation today because I believe this is a completely legit thing. Because for so many of my students, that's not the story I've heard. For so many of them, it really is a struggle of you take a break and you come back and you feel like you've lost a lot. But I believe if you are activating the, the coordination part of your brain, if you're activating that coordination musical part of your brain while you're away from the kit, it doesn't matter that you're away from the kit. So this is going to be a lot of fun. You can build significant coordination away from the kit by practicing limb to limb patterns in a chair. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to find your favorite chair, ideally a, like a kitchen chair at a table. You can play on the table with your hands or like a chair with a hard armrest so you can get some thump and some tap out of. Be on a, a wooden floor, not this carpeted floor. Um, be on something that's got some resonance. So just find a favorite chair. Adirondack chairs out on a deck. Honestly, they're perfect. I don't have one of those, but if you do, awesome. Either way, find a chair. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move up to my sunroom and I'm gonna go sit in one of my favorite chairs and uh, we're gonna enjoy some nice, beautiful October weather and I'm gonna teach you these limb-to-limb -limb patterns. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So. I'll see you up there. 
Welcome to my sunroom. We are in the fa my favorite room in my house and I love this chair here in the corner. Uh, it's a beautiful day in October here in Georgia and so that probably means my face is just a shadow uh, because it's so bright and sunny outside and the leaves are starting to change and so this is a great place to be. So bear with the shadow on my face. At least you've got nice scenery behind me. But the point of this is not my face. <laughs> We're gonna point the camera down in a minute. I like this chair because It's a really musical chair. I love playing beats on the armrests of, the, of this kind of chair. It's like a metal, kind of like an outdoor chair, but not really an outdoor chair. Uh, but these kinds of chairs are great. That's why I mentioned like an Adirondack chair at the beach. That's great for this. So let's get on to our action steps here. What we want to do is play these different hand foot combinations, strategically targeting weak areas uh, between our limbs. And really what we're going to do is just do a basic beat between different limb combinations. So our, our groove here, just for the sake of this lesson, is going to be one and a two and a three and a four. That rhythm. Boom, boom, pa, boom, 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 pa. One and a two and a three and a four. That's going to be our, our beat. And that's what we're going to use here for this main first step. So I'm going to double check here that everything is in frame. I want to make sure you all can see my feet as well as my hands up here. Um, without doing a ridiculously wide angle shot on the GoPro. All right, I think this will work. So that's the first thing we want to do. We've got that groove. That's what we're going to play. And what we want to do are these four different combinations of hand to foot. So we can do right hand, right, right hand, right foot. That right there. Or we can do left foot, left hand. Or we can mix them together and go left foot, right hand. Or right foot, left hand. So four different combinations we can start off with right here. So we want to play our groove, our kind of hip hop ish groove <laughs> between those different combinations. So we'll start off right here with the right side. And by the way, you could do toes or you could do heel. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, whether or not to do heel or toes, kind of interesting things to practice here. So we've got that combination. And then left side. Then mixing it up, so maybe right foot, left hand. Which should feel pretty natural if you're used to kick snare, right? But what about when we do this one? That's where it might get a little bit weird because we're not used to left foot being that active. And so if you've got a weak limb here, whether it's a weak left foot or left hand, this will start to expose it, which is pretty cool. So we've got those four combinations. I want you to first do those, playing that groove. Um, and of course, you can do whatever groove pattern you want. And we'll talk a little more about that. But start off with that. Now we want to do hand to hand. So we're just going to keep this simple. There's two hand to hand combos. We could do right hand kick, left hand snare, or the other way around. I'm doing my, the palm of my hand here for a low bass sound, fingers over here for a snare sound. Then switch around. And then what we can do is move to just the feet. So down here on the feet, remember we talked about, okay, we could do toes or we could do heel. So we can get strategic here and teach your toes to play independent of your heel. Now this can come in handy if you're trying to play heel down as well as heel up on the kick. And maybe you're working on some heel down as well as heel up on the hi-hat. Uh, topic for another lesson, being able to play heel down as well as heel up on the hi-hat with left foot is a really good skill to have. And this is gonna help you kind of exercise that and practice doing both. So we wanna do, again, the same groove pattern just with our feet, but we're actually gonna do four different combinations with just our feet because we're gonna treat heels as, you know, that's a thing. We've got left heel, right heel, then we've got left toes, right toes. So we can do the same kind of limb to limb combos we did with hand foot down here with our feet. So we can do right heel, right toe. We can do left heel, left toe. We can do right heel, left toe, and left heel, right toe. So those are the four combinations, again, playing that same beat. left foot, then mix them up, which is a little bit easier. And 
And what I hope you start noticing at this point, uh, my, my hope is that you're starting to notice weak points. You're starting to notice things that are just a little weird, like, you know, that doesn't feel quite right. And so before you shrug this off as a, this is a super silly chair exercise that's not gonna help me with my drumming, I hope I've, I hope I've sold you on it. If you're still watching, I, I probably sold you on this and how this is really gonna help you out a bunch. And we're gonna talk more about how this is gonna help you out a bunch. But what's really cool here is that you're exposing weaknesses in different combinations and you're gonna notice, hey, that feels a little weird. Let me spend more time playing that one. Or this one feels great. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about that one. And so when you can bring those, those weak points up up to a higher level to match the strong points, that's when you start to really feel comfortable on the drums and you can play whatever you wanna play. That's the whole point of coordination and that's a really big deal. So what we just did with our feet of, you know, the, the heels and then the, the toes, we can also do that with our hands. We can do heel of hand, like palm, fingers. So we can do those same four combinations just with our hands. Initially, we just did two, nice and simple and obvious. But we can also go and then left, Mix them up. So you're, you're getting these different parts of your hand too, which is probably a lot more applicable to hand drumming than it is stick drumming. But hey, as many combinations as we can get from this, the better, because the goal here is not to do weird things with our hands or our feet. The goal here is to get our brains to do a whole bunch of different things at once and get our brains to test out these different things. And so that's, that's where the, the tremendous benefit is here, even over practicing on the drum set. I think you, there's even more benefit doing this. And so that's your other combination there. So at this point, if we add all these up, we've got four different combinations we can do with just our hands, four different combinations we can do with just our feet, four different foot to hand combinations, plus we've just got the basic right foot, left foot, right hand, left hand, I'm not gonna to try to add all these up and do the math. You can do the math. <laughs> We've got a whole bunch of combinations of ways we can practice these things. And so now, now that we've laid the foundation for this, we can move on to our step two. Um, I'm not gonna demonstrate every one of these now because it'll take a while, but step two, play paradiddles between the different limb combinations. So all the combinations I just showed you, practice doing paradiddles like this. Whatever combination you want to do, paradiddles, boom, jump, boom, boom, jump, boom, jump, jump, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, just to give you something more complex to really work that interplay back and forth and continue really building the coordination. And you can do any kind of rudimental pattern, any kind of stick control pattern. It doesn't have to be paradiddles. That's just a great starting one that really feels like a natural rock groove. And then step three, get creative, have fun, take this and run with it. So what I want you doing is adding timekeeping that can be really fun. If we go back to, okay, we could have uh, left heel and right toe. Well, either hand could add timekeeping. Technically, if we do left hand timekeeping, left heel, right toe, that's totally backwards. It's like we're on a lefty kit. What if we do alternating sixteenths? It gets weird, like there's so many funky things you can do here. You can even create linear patterns, something that's cool. Just an idea here, I want you to have a lot of inspiration here to do what you wanna do with this. Your thumbs can become the timekeeping. So you could do something like this. I'm using my thumb to just fill in the space. So it becomes this linear pattern that I'm playing just with my hand. So, it still counts as building coordination, even if it's just one limb, because my brain is thinking about palm, fingers, and thumb. So three things going on here, even with just one limb. So you can even work on this with literally just one hand, and then practice doing that with your left hand too, which is gonna help so much with weak hand. If you can get your weak hand to do that, you know, here, here, and there, and all of those things work together, that is going to eliminate your weak hand. There's so many added benefits. We just keep landing on additional benefits and pros to doing this. So many benefits you're gonna gain from doing this. And then you can create your own patterns, create your own patterns between the different uh, combinations and then play along to songs this way. So you could literally have headphones on and just be playing along to songs. 
Um, if you are, I always think about like um, people that like ride the subway to work. If you're riding public transportation to work and you're listening to a song and you can literally sit there and practice the stuff on your way to work, not so much while you're driving just because be safe and pay attention to the road, but hey, at your kitchen table, whenever you're just sitting in a chair, like you can actually be listening to music and playing along like this and being strategic. So I know we've done a lot of these, you know, this has been a very um, overly structured way of talking about something that should be very improvisatory and spontaneous. But when you apply the structure to this and be strategic with it, you're gonna get so much more value out of it. So, hope you have fun with this. We're gonna go back downstairs. I'm gonna share with you a little bit about what this will do for you in the long run, because I want you to get motivated and inspired and ready to take action and build some serious coordination away from the kit so that you're not losing progress anymore when you go on vacation. So, I'll see you back downstairs where we'll wrap this up. So let's think long term. What does this do for you in the long run? Let's cast some vision here. Think ahead because I want you to be motivated and inspired to take action because I want you to know what's going to happen when you do all this. Well, this is going to enable you to not lose progress while away from the kit, even while on vacation. And as a matter of fact, you will grow while on vacation. It keeps beats and rhythms fresh and playing in your head. And that's really important because if mentally, you know, you've got music playing in your head, you've got these beats, these rhythms playing, then were you really away from your kit for a week? If there's still rhythms and beats playing, you're tapping them out, you're figuring them out. You know, it's all just mental. Playing the drums is just mental. And so you can come back and you've, you've mentally been on the instrument. That's fine. It works. And I believe this is actually going to deepen your coordination more than hammering out a coordination exercise on the kit. And uh, here's why. Because you're not defaulting to the typical ways of playing stuff. You have to be ambidextrous with the chair exercise. Because that's, that's the really cool thing about this whole chair exercise, that you know there's no difference between right foot and left foot, right hand and left hand. Both feet are on the same floor, both hands are on the same table or the same kind of armrest. It's all the same. When you're sitting at your kit, you're generally playing grooves where maybe right hand's keeping time. You could play open-handed, you know, you could switch some things up, but for the most part, unless you're gonna completely flip your kit backwards, right foot's always gonna be playing the kick, left foot's gonna be playing the hi-hat. And so you're always gonna have this way of defaulting to things and defaulting to a certain way of playing your kit. But when you're in the chair, suddenly all that's gone and it's just blank slate that really tests your ability to be ambidextrous. And if you can truly become ambidextrous, you're eliminating your weak hand, eliminating a weak foot, and that has tremendous impact on your drumming. And that's why I say, honestly, make a habit of doing this while on vacation, while you know sitting at a red light, while sitting at the kitchen table, and you will grow while you're away from your kit. And this will just hack the whole coordination process for you and uh, really be a game changer, I think. So I'm excited to hear from you how this goes. And I hope that this has given you tabletop drummers some major validation. I know that kind of the funny thing about this lesson is we've taken this super structured, almost ridiculously structured approach to something that should kind of just be an improvisatory, spontaneous thing. Like if you're sitting there tabletop drumming, you're probably not thinking too much about what you're playing. The point here is make a habit of doing it. And if you can apply some structure to it, even better. These are just ways that you can do this, but ultimately I want you to take it and run with it like we talked about. So hey, question for you as we're wrapping up. Are you a tabletop slash steering wheel drummer? Whatever you want to classify yourself as. Are you one? If so, awesome. Welcome to the club. I hope that you are validated and encouraged, even though maybe you've driven you know, loved ones crazy all your life with your tabletop drumming. Know that it has helped you become a better drummer and it will continue to, especially if you use it strategically. And if you're not one, if you've just never had that habit, I want to encourage you to begin building that because that really will keep stuff fresh in your head and allow you to build that coordination away from the kit so that you're not losing progress, so that you're coming back from vacation, actually feeling encouraged, empowered, and ready to get back on the kit because you're like, hey, I've got all these new ideas and beats I've been playing. How can I apply this to the kit? You sit down and you start playing and it's like, yes, I'm now making music. I'm now turning these hand-to-hand -hand patterns into music which is even more fun. And that's the way it should be. You know, maybe it's a mathematical exercise of sitting there tapping. Maybe that doesn't necessarily feel like music, but you're building a lot of coordination, you're hearing the music in your head, but then you come back to the kit and it really is music because now you've got these great sounds and now you can play along the songs. And so then it just becomes this whole fun process of getting on your kit because of the work you put in sitting in a chair. So, hey, maybe you want to do the chair practice even, you know, right here. And sometimes instead of playing on the drums, 
totally valid way to practice. I hope you have fun with it. Take action on this today. I hope this has been tremendously valuable to you and helps you become a better fellow non-glamorous drummer. Be sure to grab that e-guide, the, the 30 days to four-way rock coordination. That's gonna help you out a whole bunch and give you some additional things to practice when you're sitting there doing the hand-to-hand -hand patterns. It's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, remember, as always, stay non-glamorous. You can do this. I'll see you on the next lesson.